Simon, what's going on? Hey, Dan. How's, how's life? Yeah, life is good, even though I look like I'm, I'm in a cargo hold right now. <laughs> Some days it feels like I guess I am. But uh, yeah, I got to say, it feels a little different talking about boats with you without sunglasses on, on the dock somewhere. I, I certainly, I'm certainly missing the sun these days. It's, uh, it's a tough look without a tan, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. Sure. So, you know, Simon, I wanted to bother you today about the, the Bertram news, the Bertram, the news that they're going with the center console. It was kind of rumored for a while, but you, know, you got one of the first real stories on this new line. And I was just looking at some of our web traffic and, you know, I mean, clearly, clearly resonated with our audience. I mean, for us, it was nearly viral on social and I guess, I guess it makes sense, but you know, what do you think about it that just made this really take off? It's pretty groundbreaking news to have uh, this iconic brand that kind of uh, transcends almost boating. It's like one of those things that uh, even the outside world seems to know Bertram. Uh, yeah. It's like Ferrari almost. For them to pivot uh, into outboards seems surprising. And it kind of is, um, especially when you consider the recent history of the company, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Gavio group kind of reviving it. Right. Um, bringing it back to life with these three new sport fish models. And then to now enter this outboard segment of the market is, is shocking, surprising. Yeah. And, well, I think, uh, you know, it kind of, it kind of begs the question, right? So we, you know, I know you recently reported on the Valhalla line, you know, you got, we met Sean and Justin Healy and we got the behind the scenes tour of that facility. You know, I got to wonder if, you know, the immediate success that that fighting saw with the Valhalla boats is that, I mean, Bertram must have seen that, and it really feels pretty clearly like this is their answer to that line. Yeah, so speaking with the CEO, Mark, he was saying how discussions began last year uh, in earnest, and then they kind of proceeded to put $15 million into R&D to kind of build out this portfolio. Um, and like you're saying, it, it does have a lot of similarities with Valhalla. Uh, I guess we should mention the Bertram 39 is going to be the first center console that they're building um, with plans to unveil it at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show. I mean, if you want to do a quick comparison between the Valhalla 41, so between the two, and this maybe will show just how different these two boats are in the yeah. same LOA. Obviously the 41, the Valhalla, is a Michael Peters step V ventilated tunnel running surface. The Bertram 39 is going to be more of a deep V, kind of going back to what they've been doing with boats with both Sportfish and center consoles yeah. back in the day when they used to build out those smaller boats. And then the 41 has a beam of 11 feet, seven inches. The 39, the Bertram, has about a, a foot and a half more, 13 two. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the displacement is about the same, 21,000 pounds uh, for the Valhalla 41, 20,000 for the Bertram 39. Okay. Uh, and that's with the, I believe it's the 450, uh, trip Mercs on the 41. So that just gives you a sense. And obviously something to keep in mind is that these are all preliminary things. This is right. computational fluid dynamics. They're getting a sense of like how fast the boat goes and all that stuff. It could change very, yeah. uh, very well, but, um, but so it's interesting. And, and I guess that speaks to what Mark was saying and uh, Dan Hamilton, who's the director of product development over there, they were saying that they don't want to build out a really fast center console. What they're more uh, inclined to do as Bertram is to make something that runs really well in snotty seas mm -hmm. and then also something that, um, you know, is, is very fishable. And so speed is, I guess, the, the number one um, factor for them, which is interesting. Yeah. I got to say, I mean, it's, it's a good point you make with, you know, the what differentiates this boat because here's the number one question right they're coming into the heart of the market some would say arguably the most competitive market there is for boats these days you know how are they going to stand apart is it just going to be their name and and that brand loyalty and you mentioned the beam which i think is going to give you a lot more fish fighting space in the cockpit again for the the serious fishermen but another point of of interest um and i hate to say this with such a serious sport fishing brand that cabin really seems to benefit from that beam Huge. I mean, not to use the 41 as like the example mm -hmm. that it's up against, but comparatively, they have no 
space. They have no cuddy cabin. They have nothing to, to yeah. sleep on with that boat. Right. With the Bertram, I mean, that, that is that is a space that you're going to want to spend some time in. You know, I'm sure this boat will be used as more of an out and back. But if you had to in a pinch, that's, yeah. a, that's a room that you would see on a much larger boat. Right, right. I mean, certainly a, a very large berth, separate head. You know, the the galley in there was, uh, was kind of a surprising use of space. And I think that's really going to help differentiate it. In a huge way. Another thing will differentiate this boat is mm -hmm. that the four full-size helm seats Mm -hmm. across to me a foot and a half is not that much more feet i mean it, it is in the yeah. grand scheme of things but when it comes to building out space for another helm seat whereas most of the boats in the size range have three yeah. i mean i don't know where they they found that extra footage um to build it because you know that we're talking about what four feet of, of yeah. uh, that a helm would be but that's amazing i mean four helm seats across that's something that different that you don't really see too often right Another factor that differentiates it is you were telling me about their power choices. I mean, this this company, I know it has its roots tied to Mercury, but this company is is all Mercury, only Mercury, right? It is, which is unique, I think. The name of the game in today's marketplace seems to be customization and personalization. So whatever the customer wants, they basically get. So with Bertram kind of doubling down on this Mercury relationship signals that they have a lot of faith in that manufacturer obviously but i think at least what they were telling me was that they mercury has been kind of all along the process throughout every step and together they're kind of tweaking the ways to optimize those engines um so that, i mean that's the plus the the, the con to that i guess is that mm -hmm. It, if someone has a relationship with one of these brands, they're not going to be, I guess, the most privy to use that that boat in the future. Sure. No, that's it, it, it's a good point. The uh, you know, so again, I was kind of I was looking at your your story and, and again some of the research you did. And this is the tip. This is the tip of the spear for for Bertram and outboards. It, it looks like again they're coming out with bigger. They're coming smaller. Center console, dual console. I mean, they were even talking about outboards on the 35. So, I mean, what do you think? Is this is this just the start of uh, of the hot new trend? And, and then also, you know, you mentioned the sportfish. They're also because uh, what I thought was like, you know, even from the high 20 feet to 50 foot as like their range, that seemed to be pretty encompassing. That's a pretty big span. But they were even telling me that there's going to be boats in the lower 20 feet range. So smaller center consoles and dual consoles. So we're really seeing kind of a huge splash. I mean, uh, so yeah, I, I would say this is just the beginning. I mean, they um, project that there's gonna be 300 center consoles built, or I think it's really just the entire range, 300 boats in this outboard portfolio built a year. Um, so this could really change the face of what we think about this brand. Uh, and something to keep in mind is that they were building smaller boats back mm -hmm. in the day. They were a limited run, and I don't think they, we saw too many. There weren't too many built, which makes them very rare and, and highly prized as collectibles. Uh, but this will completely, I mean, imagine people 50 years from now, if everything goes as planned, they're going to look at Bertram maybe as just as much a center console builder as a Sportfish, which kind of blows the mind right now, but yeah, anything's possible. No, that's that's great. You really had some some really great reporting in that story. So hopefully everyone will stay tuned for that in the upcoming issue of Outboard Magazine. That should be landing on doorsteps any day now, and will also be covered in an upcoming issue of Power Motor Yacht. So Simon, thanks for the uh, thanks for the update. I'll be talking to you soon. Good to see you. Talk to you later, man. Bye.